I've decided to document uh, the race experience for somebody who has never done a run before or a big run. This is the TCS, Toronto Waterfront Marathon, used to be Scotiabank. Here we are at the Enacare Centre in Toronto at the Exhibition Place. And all of these people are heading in to the Race Expo. So here you pick up your kit and there's a bunch of booths set up. And some people really enjoy the experience of seeing all, everyone showing up and the different things you can pick up. So the first step you do is you head through and you head to a section to line up to pick up your race bib. You have to know what your race bib is through the email because that's how it's sectioned. You see a line up here, but all the way down there's a whole bunch of sections, so you have to find where your bib is. And here's the route. You head up. University, then you go across Bloor, you turn left and head down Bathurst, that's great because it's downhill, then you veer and head out for an out and back on Lakeshore, it's neat because you can see people on both sides, you get to see the elite runners as well, and then here you would head up Bay Street, although it's you can see that the people will head up Bay Street while the marathoners keep going. And this is why expos work because here we are at the Chile Half Marathon and yeah, the if you register here for this Burlington race in March, you get 40 bucks off. So both Vince and I have, well Vince is registering and I'm registering as well. Well the view of the ho from the hotel room isn't exactly beautiful and the drive to get to Toronto wasn't super fun but it is nice to be away so part of a race experience is spending some time in a hotel and relaxing. And uh, set everything out because you know you're going to be nervous in the morning. So there's the race bib. Got the stuff ready to go. Starting to feel the vibe of Toronto. Got some music here. Got some bikers. And way over there in the distance, you probably don't see it. But just below that walking pass is the finish line. And we got the Toronto sign. And that clock up there. You spend the last kilometer running up Bay Street just to see it. Can't wait to tell you all about it on that street tomorrow. This is this is part of the race experience. We're waiting on our dinner, but we're all out and we're hanging out. And uh, we also just went around and shared where we think we're going to go. And everybody puts down what they think everybody will do. Everyone's put in five bucks. And whoever has the closest differential on the real time compared to the uh, act on the actual time compared to the anticipated time combined wins the pot so anyway the social part of the experience something that a non-race person will not know is that most of your morning is spent wondering what level of clothing do you actually need to wear and what's the weather outside and how will you feel at the start and at the end and will i be too cold and will i be hot so Lots of analysis. Then there's, of course, getting it, you know, what you need in the morning and uh, making sure you're all ready and things uh, are ready to go for the race. So, this is very much a part of race morning right here. You got the, all these porta potties and a very long lineup because it's the morning and once you start to run, other things start to run. This is part of the fun too, although some people have headed on their way, but we got a group of people together. A few have already headed towards the start line, but getting together and sharing our nerves and seeing everyone get ready. There's some who just walk and enjoy, some are stretching, some are running, but uh, there's lots of anticipation and anxiety to go around. So here we are entering in a corral. 
the start line is up there, it's hard to see, and it will go a long ways back there, 20,000 people here, Adrian looking primed, and Seb, Vince, getting a picture of the moment, it's so great to be part, you start to feel the energy, so there's the nerves, but this is what makes you start to go, this is why I'm here, there's an energy about it, it makes you feel like you can do whatever you want to do. Thank you all for that, and thank you. So the race has started. You can really tell it because <laughs> it takes a while to get up there, but you'll soon start to see head bobs. And once the heads start to bob, then you know it moves up. It's like a traffic jam. At some point, it starts to go. Some people dress in creative ways, it's pretty fun. So what I just passed is what activates the chip in your bib that tells you your time, gives you a sense of where you're at, tracks for the app. Part of the challenge of the start, if you're really racing it, is how much do you give getting around the crowd? You get to hear my heavy breathing, but that's part of the race experience. We got Queen's Park. This is what's one of the neat things about running in Toronto. Lots to see. And look at here, kilometer in. Lots and lots of people. And this is just the first corral. I was in the red to start, and there's a whole bunch more yellow, purple, blue, green, all behind. Here we are, still not very far in, a couple kilometers or so. Here's the ROM on the left, and we're still on University, about to turn left onto Bloor. Bloor has great energy, lots of times there's people from U of T, fans, it's, it's great. What's hard through here is uh, finding your right pace. You're feeling the energy, you're feeling the crowd, but there's lots of people. And if you're doing a half or even a full, you have to find a pace that works for you. One of the things I love about the half is you can't just give it all you can got unless you really, really train for it. You have to respect the distance. And so, to me, it's partly strategic and mental as well as athletic. You're never gonna get this on a country run by St. Jacobs. So this is my favorite part of the entire race route, Bathurst Street. You turn off a blur and head straight down here to Lakeshore. And it's, you know, it's wide. People have spread out a little. There's still people cheering, some businesses along the way, but it's just a nice steady downhill all the way. So I often find here's where you can find a rhythm. You can find your focus. You can find your quiet if that's what you need. I guess unless you're around me right now. Uh, but it's just a really nice section. I always have a moment when I run by this hospital. I have a friend who just recently said that he runs by the Cambridge Hospital on all of his runs. And on a bad day, you often think, oh, I'm not good at what I do or I'm a crappy runner or I want to give up or all these negative thoughts like everything in life running does that to you too but running and the ability to do it is a privilege 
and then something special that we can do. And often in races, it takes this experience to remind me that's what it's all about. Being part of something, trying to better yourself, challenge yourself. And there's a whole lot of other people who would like to have the ability to do that. All right, so we're now on Lakeshore, heading west. This part's the out and back. Everyone who knows me knows I don't love out and backs, but this one's not so bad. Heading out to 12 and a half K mark. And then you get to turn around, come back on the other side. So here I am, just over eight. And already on the other side, probably 15 to 16 are the elites. Here they come, really impressive. I'm gonna take a moment to actually videotape it. It's so cool. They left seriously like five minutes ahead of me. And here's us on the other side. We look like we're walking, but we're still amazing too, in our own ways, for sure. All right, so here we are. I'm just over 10K in and uh, there's a slight hill, so I like to walk down after 10. People ask though, do you ever walk in the race or do you run the whole thing? So naturally, a lot of people do. Lots of people run the whole way, especially the more trained they are, the more fit they are, the more their mind says they have to run. Um, pending your level though, strategic walking can be really smart. So I plan to walk at the 10K, the 15 and the 18. I like to take a breath. It sounds kind of silly, but I like to do a mental collection of myself. How am I doing? Is there anything I need to do? Is there anything I need to kind of like motivate myself to do? Also, you can have these gels or like syrupy pudding and uh, you have them and they help with your energy in about 15 minutes. So I like to take one at 10 and at 15. And uh, yeah, and then on the other side, you can see here we are at 10, they're about 14. It's really starting to fill in. I like to look and see if uh, there's anybody out there that are my friends. Kind of keeps my mind going. Yeah. So this is the midpoint check-in for me. And the turnaround. Lakeshore and Ellis Avenue. Usually lots of fans. You know, every now and again, you can get a high five. Woohoo! Things is watching people, especially kids. I love watching people out for the whole ride. Who are you cheering on? I'm cheering for my dad. Yeah? Nice. Is this his first? Uh, no, it's his second. And did you cheer him on the first? Yes. Nice. Actually on the one. That's awesome. Can I have a high five? Have a great day. Cheer on everybody. It helps. Trust me. And in case you wondered, when does the crowd loosen up? Well, in the half marathon, it doesn't. This is what 20,000 people in a 5K, half K, and marathon event looks like. I'm over 14, they're over 10. It's not that I'm necessarily that much faster than those people. They might have started in a different crowd, which most of them did. As noted earlier, when you gotta go, you gotta go. And every now and again, you see people that you really like, or maybe run. Love you, you're doing great. And that's awesome. When I take my walk, when I take my walk breaks, this is something I really enjoy, watch this. I wanna high five, you wanna high five? Yes, I love it. I need a high five, anyone else need a high five? Yeah, you look like you wanna high five. High five nice, one more for the road right here, couple high fives, yeah, do. you're doing great. So, I'm just past 18. I always take a break here. It's kind of a, a refocus. I can do this pep talk. You might think the opposite. Why stop at 18? You're almost there. But it's hard, it's hard mentally. It doesn't matter how long a race is, the end is the hardest, because you know it's there. You know it's almost there. So, right at the end, maybe you can give it that push, but 19 to 20 or, Three and a half to four and a half in a 5K, it's tough. So I just take a break. I try and celebrate it. If I'm thinking strategically, I analyze how much do I need to give. 
But I don't know, coming out of COVID, it just, this is a privilege. A reminder, you can't take your health on this for granted or the challenge. You celebrate what you can. Hopefully that guy's all right. Got the attention he needs. That's why they have the help. All right, here comes the crazy moment. Marathoners to the right, half to the left. <laughs> I just, part of me thinks the marathoners sucker, but it is a whole other set of amazing. The half marathon is totally amazing. But these people, well, I'm thinking about how to maintain to the end. They can't think about the end. They're challenged, they're mental, they're physical. It's just getting started. Totally amazing, full props to them. So this is Bay Street. This is the last kilometer. It's very cool and it's very hard. A slight uphill. You see the clock all the way in the distance. It's, it feels like it doesn't get closer, but you know it's the end. So you keep pushing. The finish line is just to the left of it. Here comes the big finish. Teamwork. goals this time the goals were kind of tough to decide what to do I've been trying to just be happy that I'm a runner and I did that today and I had fun on that race and I felt like I pushed it I don't know what my time is I really would like to be under two it's a it's a number that people kind of care about but truthfully I don't care that was fun I did it I felt good and now we get to see what other people's goals are there are a few going for some PBs, and I can't wait to find out. They worked so hard to train to get ready for it. I can't wait to find out if they did it. And then there's the medal. I like to put it on me. Thank you so much, High Five Man. Sometimes people say, like, what, you get a medal for finishing? Of course. I say, if you've never done it, you don't know. You deserve that medal so much. It feels great. And truthfully, you pay for it in the... <laughs> All right, so here comes the moment of truth. I want to know that's looking like a PB. I haven't checked it out. Tell me. Oh my gosh, way to go. And how'd you do? 141. Are you happy? Oh yeah. I'm happy. Nice, way to go. <laughs> nice. All these people super proud, finishing the half. There might be the odd marathoner in there, but <laughs> that would be a superstar if they're already in. And here's what we do. We wait and see other people. And it's, uh, it's really exciting to run into those who come around full of pride at what they did. So one of the things that I love as I'm watching people come around is you'll see a whole bunch of people on their phone and some of that is checking out your time and some of that is, you know, uh, trying to connect with your friends and family who might be here. But lots of times people on their phone are just celebrating their awesomeness. And you'll see them saying that I'm so proud and you'll see people just celebrating how great they are with to the people that matter most to them. So this is one of my favorite things to do is you come afterwards and you cheer people on. I mean, it looks, they're so done. You got this, you're there either way, man. It's painful and it's awesome. You got this, yes, you're there. You're there, it's painful and it's great. Way to go, everybody. Woo, yes, Cindy, you got it. You did it, you're there. Yeah! Woo! Yes, you got it! Woo! Yeah, Chris, you got it! High five, man! You're there! You're there! Woo! We are afterwards, and we're having our beer, and we each are telling our race story. Vince just went first telling about a PB, but also, we're tallying up the differential, and here is our winner, Adrian, coming in at a collective differential of around 43 minutes combined well done which means he wins the money from last night which means he buys the beer 
and the day wraps it up and then you get to drive home through Toronto traffic that's generally not the part you remember thank goodness uh, but hopefully anyone who's seen it can uh, have a sense of what it's like to have a race weekend with some friends and maybe see you here next year